All right, a couple things for high school students who like chemistry, math, and physics. The question is, what do you major in, especially if you are kind of interested in green technologies or energy efficiency or environmental remediation? There are a couple of considerations and some things that you might be interested in. First of all, what's the difference between chemistry and chemical engineering? So I was actually a chemistry major as an undergrad. Um, I really enjoyed the idea of molecules kind of having personalities. They had anthropomorphic characteristics, at least in my mind, like fluorine was the most electronegative atom. So I used to say that it was the greediest atom. I liked kind of attributing human characteristics to atoms and molecules and later functional groups in organic chemistry. And so it really made sense to me. I think biology involved too much memorization, but then physics was kind of a little bit too dry to me. So chemistry was kind of really the center of the bullseye uh, for me. And then uh, as I started my undergraduate career, I got really interested in not just making compounds and studying them and doing analysis, but in, do in doing chemistry in a way that kind of affected the world, like in a more than just sort of laboratory setting. I was interested in reactivity and pipes and coatings and polymers and functional materials and metallurgy and processing. And so it turns out that that was chemical engineering. And the other thing I noticed is that chemical engineers, they're like less than half the number of undergraduate degree holders in chemical engineers compared to, in chemical engineering compared to chemistry, but there are the same number of jobs. So it's twice as easy to get a job as a chemical engineer as it is as a chemist. And the other thing is that you can do chemistry as a chemical engineer, but it's a lot harder to do chemical engineering if your undergraduate degree is in chemistry. So there's kind of an asymmetry there, and given the fact that you kind of take a lot of the most important chemistry classes as a chemical engineering student, you actually get kind of the best of both worlds. But what you get in addition is a lot more quantitative understanding of how chemical processes work, and you kind of develop a um, maybe a, a thick skin and confidence for dealing with with types of types of situations that you're going to find in your uh, in your industrial career. It's also chemical engineering is also much closer to business and management and economics than chemistry is. So you're always trying to make a product and you're always concerned about how your product pathway fills in, uh, fits into a regulatory environment? How are you going to pay for everything? How are you actually going to do it? How are you actually going to accomplish this project on the needed scale? And so the other thing that I learned kind of recently because so because there are a lot of chemists and chemical engineers based on the historic strength of Kodak, Xerox, and Bausch and & Lomb in the Rochester area, you actually get a lot of insights as to the types of jobs that are done by chemists versus chemical engineers. And it turns out that chemical engineers end up having a lot more career agency and end up getting more full-time jobs than, um, than chemists do, kind of on average. The chemist job tends to be a bit more temporary and is a bit more vulnerable to layoffs and so on than is the chemical engineer's job. So uh, the jobs are easier to get, they're more well-paying, and they are more stable. So big reasons. Compared to environmental science, so chemical engineering, I think, gets a bad rap because when people hear chemical engineering, they often think about 
perfluorinated alkyl substances, that is PFAS, P-F-A-S, kind of invading the environment. They think about microplastics and the microplastics catastrophe. Uh, they think about global warming and, um, and environmental kind of degradation being, you know, chemicals are bad and so on. But society kind of demands <laughs> these, these types of products and pretty much everything you look at in the environment, a chemical engineer was involved in making it from the, uh, from the pharmaceuticals that save lives to the plastic materials that are in pretty much everything to electronics manufacturing and microfabrication, which has pretty much transformed all of modern life because you can't have you can't have information technology without microprocessors, which is all the product of chemical engineering, development of photoresist, optical exposure tools, um, you know, collaboration, but all of the chemical processing is all done by chemical engineers. So you really can't have modern life without <laughs> chemical engineering. And so the goal is not to get rid of chemical engineering, it's to make it better and to make it part of the, the solution. So if you're thinking about environmental engineering, it's kind of an uphill and tropic proposition because you're talking about taking all of those little microplastic molecules out of the air and the water, or you're talking about taking all of that, uh, the, um, the, perfluorinated alkyl substances out of uh, the environment one by one, even though they're spread out everywhere. It's going to take an enormous amount of energy to do that, to, to take that approach. Um, or every CO2 molecule out of the air. How are you going to do that? How are you going to separate them? Well, it's much better to deal with those, with those contaminants by inventing products that don't produce the contaminants or that are that are designed for circularity or recycling and it's also much better to from the standpoint of carbon footprint to come up with processes in industry that do not generate carbon dioxide and ones that get you more product what you want for greater uh, greater efficiency. And that's what chemical engineering is all about. So I think that the center of the bullseye in terms of the, in terms of solving the uh, environmental, looming environmental threats are actually solidly in the field of chemical engineering. The solar energy production, wind production, um, lithium ion batteries, making uh, heat exchange in computation more efficient so you can get uh, more um, more power with more computational power with less of a um, with less of an environmental footprint. Now, why should you do it at U of R? If you want to major in chemical engineering, um, I would strongly recommend that you come to University of Rochester. And first of all, you get to have me as a professor, which could be kind of fun. Also, we are offering guaranteed research experience for all undergraduates on either a pay or for credit basis and we're um, raising money now to make the pay um, option uh, more widely um, uh, available um, in addition to the for credit option the second reason is that we offer a really easy route to getting into an MS degree program, which can be completed in one year upon completion of the BS program. And third, we have a we have a very favorable student to faculty ratio. So eight to one student to faculty ratio, super uh, easy to, for us to learn all of the students' names. Um, and I already know all of my students' names and it's only the third week of the, um, uh, of the, of the semester. And thanks for watching.